Sometimes when you do an experiment, it's pretty obvious, especially in probability, it's pretty obvious what the underlying probability of the system is. Say if you're flipping a coin 50 times and counting the number of heads, you'd expect to get about 25 heads and about 25 tails. That's just, you know, pretty obvious. You can almost get that without even thinking about it. But sometimes you're doing an experiment that's a little bit more complicated and the underlying probability is not obvious. So this is why we do experiments to try and find out what's going on. So here's an experiment that's a bit more complicated. What you do is you take a couple of dice and you put them into a cup then there goes the second cup and you jiggle them around you roll them out and you have a look at them and you see that the first die has a five and the second die has a three and what we're looking for is to see if the sum of those two, and when you add up the 5 and the 3 and you get to 8, whether that number 8 is a multiple of 3. In this case it's not, so we're saying it's a no, we're colouring it black, and we're going to the left on our little diagram over here. Then, put the die back in the cup, roll it around, out on the desk, what have we got? We've got a 1 on the first one and a 6 on the second one, add it up to, together, that's a 7, that's another no, so we make another black mark over here because it's a no, and we do it again, roll the dice around, see what we get. Now we've got a 2 and a 1, that is a multiple of 3, so we make a red, we say that's a yes, and we go to the right over here. And so you can see now we've got uh, we've had three rolls, and if we stopped our experiment now, you'd say that the chances. Well, all you could really say is that the chances of getting a um, a multiple of three is one one chance out of the three rolls that we've had. So we get one out of three, and you can see that that's 33 percent or 33.33 percent. And if you look here you can see that we have, uh, because we've had two blacks and one red, if you break up these dots at the bottom equally, we're at 33%. That's why we're using this triangle. It just so happens that if you go to the left for no and to the right for yes, then you get these percentages at the bottom. So let's, because we're doing uh, using a computer here, we can don't actually have to roll a dice, we could just have another go. Here we've got another no, so it, it's black and it's going to the left. And so now you would say, if you stopped your experiment now, you would say that the experimental probability of getting a multiple of three is a quarter, or 25%. So how can this number keep changing? Well, that's the idea of experimental probability. The more you do your experiment, or every time you do the experiment, you get a result. Each result is just as important as each other result. But after you've done them for a while, it starts to give you an idea of what you're going to expect. So here we have another, after five rolls, we have another no. So we're down to one out of five, which is 20%. We get another yes. We've got two out of six. We're back to 33 and a third percent. Another no gives us two out of seven, down to 28%. So you can see, as we do the experiment more and more times, our percentage keeps changing. So after 10 rolls, we've got 20%. After 15 rolls, we've got still got 20%, 3 out of 15. We yeses. After 20 rolls, we've got 3 out of 20, we're down to 15%. After 25 rolls, we're down to 12%. Now, 12%, that might be rancy. So, well, you know, I've done 25 rolls. I reckon 12% chance. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's actually a bit low, that number. And that's I only know that because I've done it a few times. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go back, hide all our rolls, and start rolling these dice again. And because we're using computers, we can see that we're getting a no, yes, Yes. So now, after three rolls, we're up to 66% or 67% if you look up here. So that's really different from where we ended up with our 12% before. And so after 10 rolls, we're at 60%.
even though it's the same experiment, the same sorts of numbers, it's just every time you do the experiment, you end up with different numbers. After 20 rolls, we're down to 55% because we've got 11 yeses out of our 20 rolls, which is 55%, and up here we're 48%. So what's the true number? What's the answer going to come in? We've had a 12%, we've had a 48%. Because we're using computers, we can just click clicking this button and that is going to simulate rolling the dice 25 times each time. So each time you do it, you get a different pattern. There's a low number, 20%, 36%, 16%, 36%, 32%, 28%, 36%, 24%. So after you've done it a few times, I'm not sure how many times I've clicked it now, but probably about 10 or 15 or so, we're starting to narrow in on this area around here. Just because we've done the experiment a few times, we're sort of thinking, well, you know, most of the time it's been around in here, between, say, about 28 and about 40. It's in there. You, know, you keep looking and you go, yeah, it's in that range, in that range, in that range, a bit low, in that range, a bit low, in that range, a bit high. But if you had to stop this experiment here, if this had been the first time you did it, you might be thinking, well, it's 50% there, it's 50% there, it's 57% there, it's 58% there, it's 55%. If this had been the first time, you might think that somewhere around here was the right answer. But because we've done it all those other times, we sort of know that you're expecting to get a number around about here. So I'll do a few more. You might like to record some of these answers and somehow try and find what they mean or use averages or something like that to find the true underlying value for this experiment. But the point is that every time you do an experiment, you can get a different value, even though you're doing this experiment the same way. Just depends on the luck of the draw. And each experimental result is equally valid. You take them all into account. And when you've done enough of them, we're up to 40 clicks yet. 40 clicks would be a thousand rolls of the dice, which takes a long time to draw with pencil and paper and to, to check. But I'm going to do it a lot quicker with the computer here. Yeah. Round about there. 32, 28, 36, around about that sort of number. That's what you can say. That's why you do experiments over and over again, and you repeat them a lot of times. So you can sort of look at a particular experiment and say, well, that one's around what we expect, or it's a little high, or it's a little low. That's what it's all about.